Welcome back everybody, good afternoon, and we're going to take a look at a couple more first round cornerback prospects here, and this video is going to be about a couple of guys who, if you were going to target them, you would probably target them at 20. Yeah, they're not good enough to take at 5, I don't think, there's not enough value there, I think that's kind of off the table, but you can hope, if you like them, you can hope that they'll be there at 20, and I don't think that's an, an unreasonable hope. So, the two guys are, well, first, let's start with Joey Porter Jr. Uh, you may remember his father from a long NFL career. Penn State Nittany Lions, 23 years old, big. Dude is big and dude is long. And right then and there, I think you can kind of figure out where the appeal is here. This is the kind of corner that Pete Carroll tends to do really well with. The guys with long arms, the guys who are big, and the guys who are physical. Six foot two and a half, 193 pounds, 34 inch arms. You get Joey Porter Jr. across from Tariq Woolen and you've got some terrifying outside cornerbacks. 10 inch hands too while we're here, big hands. Now he's not as fast as some of these corners, 4'4", 640, but... Phenomenal quickness, 1.5 10-yard split, which tells you he can accelerate fast. 35-inch vert, 10-foot, 9-inch broad, very good for a guy of his size, I would say. I'm fine with that. 17 bench press reps, sure. Um, most of the big boards have him going before 20, but they all have him going in, like, the teens. The aggregate has him going 14. So if you like him, you can either reach pretty hard for him at 5, you could trade for a pick in the teens, or you can hope he falls down to 20. And knowing the Seahawks and their unwillingness to trade up in the first round, I have to believe that they would be hoping he's there at 20 if they like him. And there's reason to believe that they do. This guy's put together a really nice career at Penn State last year. He, I believe, so what happened last year was the first game of the season Penn State played Joey Porter Jr. had six pass deflections. And after that, quarterbacks kind of stopped throwing his way. So he really became a shutdown corner last year. In 10 games, 27 tackles. A big reason why is because players just weren't catching the ball near him because he was a shutdown corner. 11 pass deflections and a 77.4 PFF coverage grade. Now, the year previous, he had a lot more tackles. And he had a lot fewer plays on the ball, although he did have his only career college interception. And I think that was because he just wasn't quite as shut down a cornerback in 2021 as he was in 2022. So, therefore, more chances to make tackles. So, the appeal is obvious. The guy is big and long, and Carroll's going to love that. He's very physical at the line of scrimmage as well. Not going to give receivers a free release. He's a pretty good tackler, and he's solid in run support, although I do think he needs to... Uh, Get a little bit better at the uh, block shedding stuff. Uh, should be a great fit for man defense or zone defense. Although I think there are obviously some areas where he'll be much better in. Because this is such a taller and t kind of a long-legged guy. He's very intelligent with the way he reads uh, receiver routes and knows where to be. <coughs> and <clears throat> this is a guy who didn't get tested very often. Quarterbacks just stopped throwing his way eventually. And... I don't know if that's going to fully translate to the NFL, but it really impressed me last year how he put on such a show in the first game of the year for Penn State. And at that point, most quarterbacks just threw up their hands and were like, okay, I guess we're going to make our hay elsewhere because Joey Porter Jr. is going to shut down pretty much anybody he lines up across from. Now, he is a little bit on the bigger side, which there is a little bit of a give and take there. His quick twitch movements aren't as good as you would hope. And I'm talking about things like where you have to react very quickly. Like when you're doing a zone drop and then the receiver in front of you suddenly breaks off their route and you've got to plant your foot and just go if you're going to make a play on the ball because things are happening so quickly. That kind of stuff, not exactly his forte. So he is going to give up something there. When he plays off man, when he's not pressing at the line of scrimmage, he loses a lot of his value. If he's trying to play off, if he's just trying to protect against the deep ball, I, I, I feel like he's a much less interesting player, and I feel like you're taking something away from him if you're forcing him to play like that. Um, he does pick up a few too many penalties, at least he did in college. He got a yellow hanky thrown his way more than once last year, 
and that's something that he's going to have to clean up. And he is already 23 years old, so he's not a super young prospect anymore. And obviously, the dude can't catch. The dude has one interception across several years starting at Penn State. He can't catch. He can make plays on the ball. He uses his length really well to break up plays. He's really good at breaking up passes, but he's not going to take it away very often. He's uh, got got rocks for hands, basically. So I think as long as we're willing to accept that this is not a guy you want playing off coverage and just um, you know playing off because he's scared of the deep ball and trying to just protect everything over the top, as long as we understand that this is a guy you want to have play physically and then shadow receivers from behind, I think he's going to be great for this system. If he's there at 20, I'm tempted. I'm not going to say I'm married to it because he can't catch and there are other little issues, but I would take him at 20. I think that would be good. Okay, so that's Joey Porter Jr. I like him, not enough to reach for him, but enough to hope that he's there at 20. This is the other likely first-round cornerback, Deontay Banks of Maryland. Uh, Could not find his age, but the general consensus seems to be he's likely to end up in the first round, the fourth and final first-round cornerback. Six feet tall, 197 pounds, 31 and 3 8 inch arms, 9 and 3 8 inch hands. Ran a really good 40 time and a really good 10-yard split on that as well. Jumped out of the building 42 inches, 11 foot 4 inch broad. Dude is a phenom athlete, which is cool because I think that a lot of people felt like his play speed was not so great. Now, if he gets on the football field and suddenly he doesn't look as fast, then that's not that useful to us. But what this may also mean is that there's an extra gear to him that we didn't know he had. And if he can unlock that on a football field, if he can become a little more comfortable playing the position of cornerback, maybe you'll see a guy who's even faster and more athletic than what you saw at Maryland. So... Half of the big boards have him in the first. The other ha- uh, two have him in the early second. One actually has him in the early third. But the aggregate has him 24th overall, so late second. I'm sorry, late first. Kind of the uh, maybe the last quarter of the first round. He only really has one year of big statistical contributions. He played 12 games last year, 38 tackles, one pick, eight passes defensed. 74.3 PFF grade, so... The production isn't sterling with Deontay Banks. He doesn't have monster production. He has a lot of talent, a lot of uh, promise, but you are hoping you can bring it out of him at the pro level. He's somebody who can shadow a receiver throughout their route extremely well, somebody who's really good at hanging receivers through their break, through their double moves, through their fakes. Whatever it is they do, he's really good at just sticking with them like glue. So, going to be really good in man defense, I think. Um, He's proven that he can be good in press coverage and off coverage. So, he's good when he's allowed to get his hands on the receiver, and he's also good when he's playing off and protecting against the deep, big uh, play. Um, He's also really good at fighting to make sure he's going to disrupt the ball at the point of the catch. So, he's somebody who is going to find a way to make plays on the ball frequently. And he's got good, quick, rea- like they call it reactionary athleticism, where there's an opportunity to go make the play and you just need to go. Like you've got no time to really think about it. You just got to make that plant, throw yourself in the direction of where the ball's going and knock it down. He's really good at those quick reaction things. So he's going to be able to make a lot of plays at the last second, which is key. Now I'll say this. Um... If you go back and read some scouting reports from when he was playing at Maryland, uh, a lot of them said he was about six foot two and two hundred and five pounds. At the combine, he was two inches shorter, which is significant, and about eight pounds lighter, also fairly significant. So he's not as big as people expected. Now he also tested faster and quicker and more athletic than expected. So there's a trade-off there for sure. But he wasn't quite the big, rangy cornerback. Like, there are a lot of old scouting reports that were talking about how lengthy he is. But at the Combine, not really, right? 31 and 3 8 inches, that's not really lengthy. So this is an example of it looking like one thing, but then you get in the measuring room and you realize, eh, not really. So you wonder, how is it going to translate against NFL-level talent? It's not the same sometimes. 
Um, I do think he can be a little overly aggressive, Deontay Banks. I think there are times when he bites on the fake a little too hard. I think there are times when he uh, gets a little grabby and um, commits a penalty trying to uh, go make a play on the ball. He's had some injuries in his college career, like he didn't play that much in previous years before 2022, so already been banged up. And I think zone defense is a little bit of a weakness for him. So as interested as I am in him just because of his measurables from the combine, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. He's much. Go- he, I think he's going to be much better in man than in zone. Um, the injuries are a red flag for sure. And he wasn't the big rangy corner that some people were expecting. So I would take him at a certain point, like if he's there in the early second, yeah, sure, the value is good. If the value gets to be that juicy, then it's hard to turn it down. Like you can spend an early second pick on a cornerback giving you these traits, but I'm not taking him at 20 and I don't think I'd take him at any point before that early second round either. He just not not a good enough fit. I don't think he's going to be very good in zone. And I it, it it I really like him too. It's too bad. I just don't think it makes sense right now with the defense that we're running. All right. So those are the other two corners that I believe are going to go in the first round. I'm interested in one, not so interested in the other. And uh, tomorrow we will be moving on to the day two prospects, and there are quite a few of them. See you guys then. Go Hawks!